Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is actually my first time filming in 2022. And obviously it's crazy, it's 2022. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to vlog part of my day. Granted it's later on, but also it doesn't help that the sun sets soon, like early and also it's cloudy and spitting it down. So yeah. Well, it looks like it's spitting, based on the rain that goes onto my window. But, so unfortunately I've had to put the light on. My room is still a mess from when I brought stuff back on Sunday. Just because I have been working. And today, it was, and technically I, like, I have worked tonight. But, I've had like the whole of the rest of this day off. And I have been lazy, like I have not done anything. I've practically not left my bed apart from to get changed and to go to the fridge for a banana and a kind of Pepsi Max. So yeah, I have been lazy. I do need to feed myself something and it would be better for me to do a cooked meal because I, let's just say I haven't cooked in the time I've been back. Like Sunday lunch, we went out for a meal just cause that was the day they brought me back. And then I made myself a wrap when I came home. I've had a wrap every single night because it's been just so easy and I've not used any cutlery or anything so I've not washed up. True ultimate lazy meal. And then Monday we did a food swap at work. So I had a Thai green curry so we, and then came home wrap. Tuesday I had a chicken burger at work. Like didn't pay for it or anything because that's just how it is at work. Then came home. Right, yesterday, so yesterday was Wednesday, today's Thursday. Yesterday I had a beef burger at work again, same reason, came home, wrap. So I have not cooked in a three and a half, well now it's four days, but before it was like three and a half days that I've been back. So I do need to cook something and it would be better for me to cook something while I've, from my freezer because I've just chucked two minces in someone's random drawer and so I, it would be better for me to get them back into my own drawer. Well, drawers, because I've taken over more than one in the freezer, but people don't care. I've been ultimately lazy and I'm soon going to be able to go collect a hell of a load of parcels. Now, not that many orders, but they've decided to be shipped in multiple packages. That's just how it is. I do need to, I do want to um sort out some of my stuff. And like, because I have unpacked some stuff, but I haven't unpacked all of it. So I do need to do that because that's kind of the current state of my room. But yeah, I'm so glad to be back. It's so much calmer. Like I'm one of three people back in my flat, but even when everyone's back, it's still calmer because yeah, I might interact with them every now and again during the day, but... I don't have often like hear them whereas in the sense of like if you're in a house you hear if someone shouts at someone and like you can hear a lot of movement here you can't and granted at home it could just be the house itself and it's easy to hear sounds but here it's just so calm like I don't have to have much people interaction granted i only had the first interaction with a flatmate early hour like early hours of this morning because of the fact that i've been working so i've not interacted with anyone on a typical week i don't have to interact with someone much and like i have most of the day free to myself and i don't have to like worry in a sense of like telling someone where i'm going because it's like if I was at home I'd always have to be like have to say like where I was going or even if I was just going for a walk but like if I was going out obviously it's more of a making sure I'm safe so they know where I am kind of thing but I don't have to worry about that and it's some of those like invisible like stresses or like in a family home you sometimes have like the invisible intensity I don't know what I'm trying to say but like there's this pressure I don't even know what I'm trying to say but I think you could probably understand 
like I don't have to worry about that also I'm only having to like do stuff for myself because I hate doing stuff for other people like at home like I don't like cleaning the kitchen because I don't make the most of the mess whereas here okay yeah I have a job to do but it's kind of like different and obviously like I prefer doing stuff for myself by myself deciding to do it for myself because I want to rather than being told to do it and okay yeah I have to do a job in the kitchen but at the same time I'm not properly told to do it if that makes sense and it's just that stress is all gone and I'm able to be more independent and it because when I moved to uni I knew that I was going to be happier overall in myself because I was able to be independent like I knew that I would be fine living alone well I, alone but you get what I mean like I knew I'd be fine and I knew I'd be okay and to be perfectly honest never once in the three months I was away before Christmas did I want to go home that just wasn't something I wanted like most of my flatmates apart from one had gone home one hadn't just because she'd come from five hours away but everyone else had gone home in some capacity i have just collected all my parcels and when i say all i mean all with some of it though it's like not like i said it's multiple orders enter one also does anyone just feel a bit off at the moment don't know whether it's just because i've worked so much in the past previous four days because it worked out at 35 hours that i've worked in like three and a half days which is obviously mental because that's like what people would work in five days obviously nurses it's like three but it's not in a row apparently they never like to stick nurses on three shifts in a row or is it three night shifts or whatever now in one order jesus christ i ordered some bin bags these are 50 100 liter heavy juicy refuse stacks extra strong leak resistant because some bin bags that I had caused some like ripped and caused leaked yeah so for the extra strong they're good I did not expect for some reason I didn't expect the roll to be this big like look at that compared to the size of my face look at it it's massive and it's heavy as well and then the other thing that came in the box which is part of a different order was the a book titled the unhoneymooners by christina lauren yeah this is a book haul and it just says olive is always unlucky her identical twin sister amy on the other hand is probably the luckiest person in the world while she's about to marry her dream man, Olive is forced to play nice with her nemesis, the best man, Ethan. Yet Olive's luck may be on the turn. When the entire wedding party, except for Olive and Ethan, gets food poisoning, there's an all-expenses-paid honeymoon in Hawaii up for grabs. Putting their mutual hatred aside, Olive and Ethan head for paradise. But when Olive runs into her future boss, the little white lie she tells inspires out of control. Forced to play loving newlyweds, she and Ethan find themselves in closer proximity than they ever expected. Soon Olive finds that maybe she doesn't mind pretending. In fact, she's beginning to kind of, to feel kind of lucky. Yeah, I'm trying to um, go out of my usual genre of books. So for anyone who's never watched a video of mine, my usual genre is like thrillers. So like primarily like crime, maybe like the odd psychological but i'm trying to broaden my horizons so the next two books they're from the same author the first one is the flat share and it's beth o'leary and it says their friends think they're crazy but it's the perfect solution leon occupies the one bed flat while tiffy's at work in the day and she has the run of the place the rest of the time but with obsessive ex-boyfriends wrongly imprisoned brothers and of course the fact that they still haven't met yet it seems the flat share is more complicated than expected so yeah i can't 
I didn't even, with this one, I didn't even know what it was about. I've just heard good things. And then the next one is The Switch by Beth O'Leary. And it says, after blowing a big presentation at work, Lena takes a two-month sabbatical and escapes to her grandmother Eileen's house for some overdue rest. Eileen is nearly single and about to turn 80. She's like a second chance at love, but her tiny Yorkshire village doesn't offer many eligible gentlemen. A life swap seems the perfect solution. But with a rebel of unruly OAPs to contend with, as well as the distractingly handsome local school teacher, Lena learns that switching lives isn't straightforward. In London, Eileen is a huge hit with her new neighbours and what with the online dating scene, but is her perfect match nearer to home than she first thought? I just wanted to um, broaden my horizons, plus each book was £2. And also the Unhoneymooners was also £2, so it was sort of like easy to expand my horizons whilst not spending too much. And by the way, these bin bags were like £6.50 or something. But yeah, because it's my job to empty the bins. Oh yes, this one I didn't open just because I know it's Waterstones. Also, I've got many cups in my hands from work, like not like large cups, like all the tiny ones on my fingers and my hands. And honestly, yeah. And also like the odd burn. Forgot to mention I had to get stitches because of work. I was actually kind of, ex as weird as this sounds, I was actually kind of excited to get stitches because I've always wanted stitches. But I didn't want to have to get them in like a really life threatening way, if that makes any sense. I'm going to get out the rest of my Waterstones order and then show you what I got. Now I'd like to point out all these books that I've bought have been bought with birthday money. Like I said, I'm trying to expand my horizon. So the first one I got is The Love Hypothesis by, who was it? by Ali Hazelwood and it says when a fake relationship between scientists meets the irresistible force of attraction it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos as a third year PhD candidate Olive Smith doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships but her best friend does and that's what got her into the situation convincing Arne that Olive is on her way to a happily ever after was always going to be tough Scientists require proof, so like any self-respecting woman, Olive panics and kisses the first man she sees. That man is none other than Adam Carlson, a young hotshot professor and well-known ass, which is why Olive is posi positively flawed when he agrees to keep her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. But when a big science conference goes haywire and Adam surprises her again with his unyielding support and his unyielding abs, their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion. Olive soon discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting our own heart under the microscope. It was more of a, I'm trying to, so many people like rave about this on book talk. So yeah, I should probably bring these closer to the camera, sorry. And the next book I've got is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. So many people rave about this book. And it says, Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She's come a long way from a small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston and started her own business. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kincaid, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn, and maybe even a little arrogant. He's also sensitive, brilliant, and has a total soft spot for Lily, but Ryle's complete aversion to relationships is disturbing. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love and a link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Ryle is threatened. Then the next book I bought is The Mermaid of Black Conch? Clonk? Conk? And it's by Monique Ruffy or Ruffay, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. Near the Isle of Black Conk. Someone tell me in the comments. A fisherman sings to himself while waiting for a catch, but David attracts a sea dweller that he never expected. Asaya? Akaya? 
someone please I'll probably google it well I will an innocent young woman coerced by Janice Wise to live as a mermaid when American tourists capture Ikaya David rescues her and vows to win her trust. Slowly, painfully, she transforms into a woman again. Yet as their love grows, they discover that the world around them is changing and they cannot escape the curse forever. This one I didn't see. I have seen on BookTok, but I haven't, it's not really talked about much. And holding it in person, I'm realising it's quite, it's actually a short book. And also the font's quite big, like there's 200 and 45 pages so it's a short read which is obviously brilliant for me who's not read that many books and yeah I just sort of saw it I liked the front cover and I thought you know what I'm gonna get it and then the is this the last book is this the last book no it's not <laughs> Then the next book I got is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. Carolina Martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially when her little white lie about her American boyfriend has spiralled out of control. Now everyone she knows, including her ex-boyfriend and his fiance, will be there. She only has four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic for her and aid in her deception. NYC to Spain is no short flight and her family won't be easy to fool. But even then, when Aaron Blackford, the six foot four blue eyed pain in the arse, offers to step him, she's not even tempted for a second. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood boiling and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate and as the wedding gets closer, the more desirable an option Aaron Blackford becomes. Yeah. So many people rave about it and it was like, why not? The final book that I have is Daisy is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid is the author of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I absolutely loved. And on Facebook, like last week, I decided to join a book club. And this was the book for the month. And so I bought it. I've not actually been active in that group, but it was more of a, I wanted a book to follow, like I wanted a book recommendation kind of thing to follow along with. And just to part participate in, even if I was never active. And yeah, this was their book for the month. And it says, from the moment Daisy walked barefoot onto the stage at the whiskey, she and the band were a sensation. The sound defined an era. Their albums won were on every turntable. They sold out arenas from coast to coast. This is the story of their incredible rise, the ambition, the desire, the rivalry and the music. And then on 12th of July 1979, Daisy Jones and the Six split up. Nobody knew why until now. Now I'd like to point out, this is purely fiction for anyone wanting to buy it but it's not about a real band or anything those are the, the books that i've got it's been so nice to have a day doing nothing like obviously yeah again i'm working tonight but i've had a day doing nothing and it feels so good and like i feel like i'm actually gonna go to work like proper like refreshed for four hours then come home again but it's just it's so nice and oh I love it but yeah I'll talk to you guys a little later